Hey guys, Chris here. Today I'm gonna be reviewing um, an album that I got yesterday. Now normally um, I like to, when listening to albums, I like to let them kind of set in, you know, listen to like them for at least a month before I review them. But um, I did not do that this time because I'm just way too excited about this album because I was supposed to um, get it around my birthday. Uh, back in April, but they actually ran out of copies for it, so I just bought it um, about a week ago, um, and it just came in the mail yesterday, and over the past like 24 hours, I've listened to it about six times, so I, I kind of know how it is now, um, but anyway, it's Hefty Fine by the Bloodhound Gang. Here we have a picture of um, naked Paul Blart on the front cover, um, and on the back, it's like supposed to look like a packing list um and if you look inside the cd um bloodhound gang have to find this end up because you know it's supposed to be themed around like a you know like a big box um and in here you can see the the band members all um tacked onto a, a shipping label kind of thing um Lyrics packet, pretty standard lyrics packet, except for the fact that if you open it up, um, <laughs> that's there. Um, but apart from that, it's a pretty standard lyrics packet. Um, now, in terms of the actual album, um, it's very good. It's very 2005. It was released in 2005, so it's going to be very 2005. So I wouldn't go so far as to call it timeless because it does feel, it doesn't feel dated, but it just feels like how you'd expect a rock album from 2005 to feel like. And I was, I really like pretty much all these songs on the album. Or no, I like all the songs on the album. They're all great. Um, they, they kind of vary in style. You have, um, you have some kind of like in that industrial rock kind of, feel it's like um it's hard to explain it like it's just a, it's a genre that um I found out about because I was doing a little bit of research on this album and I can see how they described it as industrial rock um and some of them are just in their typical rock style um um one, one of the songs is um like Euro Dance kind of type, untis, 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 which is one of the singles off the album. Um, yeah, no, so it opens up with a little joke track um, and goes into the first song called Balls Out, which is kind of reminiscent, honestly, the, the way the whole song goes. It's kind of reminiscent of Yummy Down On This from um, Hooray For Boobies, which is their album before this. And that goes into Foxtrot Uniform Charlie Kilo, which is just a song made up entirely of euphemisms for sex, um, which actually originated from two of the band members exchanging emails um, with, with the, all those euphemisms, and it just turned into a song. That goes into I'm the Least You Could Do, which, with being a very good song, it also, um, another interesting thing about it is before the Bloodhound Gang was the Bloodhound Gang, they were called, um, they were called Bang Chamber 8, and they were a Depeche Mode cover band, um, and they released four original songs, one of them was called Birthday Boy, um, and I'm the Least You Could Do used the, the piano riff from, um, Birthday Boy, which I find very interesting and cool, because it kind of flashes, or it, like, gives just a tiny little sample of what they used to be. That goes into a song called Farting With The Walkman On. Um, and then there's a joke track, Diarrhea Runs In The Family. It's just him taking a shit in the bathroom. <laughs> it's very muffled, but <laughs> it's so stupid. And then that leads to Ralph Wiggum, which is a track about a character from The Simpsons. Um, it's a very good song as well, which leads into Something Diabolical, which in my opinion, Something Diabolical is probably the most un-Bloodhound Gang song I've ever heard. There's very, I don't think there's any humor of any kind in the song. 
and it's very slow and um, it feels just put together. Um, and it's one of those songs, it's a, like Bloodhound Gang, is, um, or their, their singer, Jimmy Pop, it's very rare when he'll like go to his lowest and raspiest, and that's what he does in this song, which I really like. Um, and, but it just does not feel like a Bloodhound Gang song. It's just way too serious and way too slow. And I mean, it's a good song. I really like it, but it just doesn't really fit. And then another joke track overheard in a Wawa parking lot. And Wawa is a Pennsylvania gas station chain, if any of you didn't know. And then, of course, it leads into Pennsylvania, which they actually tried to get to be the um, Pennsylvania's national, or their Pennsylvania's anthem, but that really didn't work. And then leads into Untis, 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 and the last song, No Hard Feelings, which is similar to something diabolical, but it does have a little bit of humor in it. And then there's there's like a little tiny bonus thing at the end of the album if you wait like five minutes after No Hard Feelings ends. Um, it's not really worth the wait though. The one on Hooray for Boobies is because it's a it's a good like three minutes of just studio banter, whereas this is only like five seconds of someone saying something. And you know, I, I just felt ever so slightly disappointed with this album because there's only nine real songs on it, and that's the least amount of songs there have been, or real songs on a Bloodhound Gang album. Hooray for Boobies had 13. Um, uh, what do you call it? One Fierce Beer Coaster had like something like 11. Um, uh, Use Your Fingers had like 12 or 13, and um, Hard Off had somewhere around that too, but never has there been an album with just nine songs on it. So it's slightly disappointing, and the quality of the songs is, it's, it's okay. Um, a lot of them are really good songs, but a lot of them just kind of, I don't know, this album, like, each song is really good, but as a whole, the album just kind of leaves something to be, it just kind of leaves you feeling like, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel that complete, honestly. Um, so I, I'd give it, overall, I would give it, a, for a Bloodhound Gang album, as an album in general, I'd give it, like, a 6.5 out of 10. But as a Bloodhound Gang album, I expect more from it, more in terms of songs, like actual songs on the album and just the quality of the songs, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. I really like the album, but I just, there's just something lacking in it, um, between like the lack of songs or just, I don't know, how some of them, I mean, they all came out good, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't make, you know, a lot of Bloodhound Gang songs know how to make me laugh, but none of these really spark much in me. I mean, they're really good to listen to, but I don't know. Um, but no, it's still a good album though. And I'm going to listen to it many, many more times as long as I have it. But I don't know, between all five Bloodhound Gang albums that I've listened to, this one is in last, I think. But, um, I don't know. This, this review is running a little long. So, um, I'm going to wrap it up, but I mean, if you get the chance, I mean, copies of this are kind of hard to find, so I mean, I would get one if you're a fan, but I mean, you probably already have one if you're a fan. I, I tried to get mine earlier, but um, I don't know, for, for, I don't know, it's just not as special as their other albums, but that's what I'm going to leave it at, and I'll see you guys in the next video.